Hey, Dan Meyer here, and today we're going to talk about business plans. And I'm going to go over some common types of business plans because if you're thinking of launching a business or if you're trying to scale your business significantly and make big changes, you want to go back and think about your business plan. And the first thing you want to do is think about what kind of business plan do you need? What are you trying to achieve? So what I'll do is go through and review uh, five types of business plans, right? There's a startup business plan. There's a business plan for internal where you're launching something that already exists. There's a strategic business plan where you're looking to do significant changes over time. There's a feasibility business plan where you're thinking about launching a new business, but you haven't decided to yet. Or you're thinking about launching a new, new significant part of your business, scaling up to something new, moving to the location, launching big new products do a total change in what you do. That would be like a feasibility plan. And then a what if plan. What if certain things happen? So this would be kind of like, you know, uh, an action plan to happen if certain things, opportunities come up or risks present themselves or unforeseen consequences of a choice that you made in the past or just life gets in the way. You might want to have a what if business plan ready. So we're going to talk about those five business plans today. And I'm going to share with you as I do that some of my experience because I've launched five businesses in the last 10 years. So each business plan that I have kind of talks about a different part of my, my business plan for myself, right? So I launched my first business plan over 10 years ago um, with my business BPO Elite. And then that was after 15 years at Wells Fargo. Um, before that, I was a teacher, a college teacher. Uh, so I, I was had a pretty wide range of experiences. And when I launched my first company um, as a startup, and I did a lot of things to help me build that plan. And then when I launched my next company, DME IPH, I learned from my first experience and had a much more solid business plan. And then Sonic Analytics was actually kind of like a, a rebranding, a relaunching of DME IPH. Sonic VA was a spinoff of Sonic Analytics, and Data as Wealth was designed specifically um, for a very certain niche based on a new business opportunity. So I basically had five businesses with five different types of business plans. So we're going to kind of go through those today. The first is startup, right? For startup owners, um, that you're at the beginning of everything, you want to have a really well thought out plan. If you go and Google search business plan, or especially a startup business plan, you're going to see a bunch of templates. Just grab one that makes sense. Don't pay anybody money for a business plan. Don't hire someone to do your first business plan. Do it yourself. Get a template. Start filling it out. You'll start seeing the elements that are true in pretty much all business plans, but especially a, a startup business plan. What's your overall vision, kind of who's involved, how much money you're planning to make, who are you going to market to, what are you going to sell? All these things are pretty standard across business plans. So just grab one that helps you start kind of putting together a written plan of what you're going to do for your business. Now, you could be doing this because you're looking for funding. A lot of people that do startup business plans also have to do a pitch deck, right? A power point or a presentation that's asking for investors to invest. So you need the business plan before you go out there and start making money. It is the first thing that you should do. Basically, you're going to discuss your market, the competition, your financial projections, the value of your idea is what you're trying to do when you want to go out there and sell it. So first of all, you put it in your business plan. You follow the template. You fill it out. You add things to kind of add what makes sense for you. You kind of take that business plan, you make a PowerPoint out of it. That's just the high level bullet points. That's the pitch deck. Your business plan should probably be a one page summary and then probably, you know, a good five to 10 pages of meat. And then the PowerPoint, you know, should be no more than like a two or three minute per PowerPoint with four or five slides that talk about really high level who you are, who's in your on your team, um, why you're doing what you're doing, how you're going to make money and how much money are you going to make are the things that you want to have in your business plan and your pitch deck if you're doing startup. I did that with BPO Elite. I went out there when I did my first business plan. It was very detailed. I spent weeks on it um, and I was pretty excited about it. And I got out there, I launched my business. And after the first year, my business failed. My first startup was a beautiful disaster, but I learned a lot from it. So when I did my next business, I went out and did a business plan, which was basically kind of re-engineering some of the things that I had did with BPO Elite for DMAI and re focused away from doing uh, outsourcing to just doing training for outsourcing and call center companies, um, I figured out who the people that I wanted to bring with me and how we could take what was BPO Elite and re-merge it into DMAI. 
and that became the top analytics training company in the Philippines. I did um, thousands of trainings for tens of thousands of people across Southeast Asia over the last 10 years based on what I learned um, in my first business. And my second business plan was much more focused, was much more understanding the market, understanding the competition, understanding the value that I could bring. So my business plan for DMAI was definitely uh, deeper, but narrower, if that makes sense, right? So you wanna make sure that you get all the details, especially the financial aspect, how I was gonna make money. I didn't really have a good model to make a lot of money with BP Elite, made a lot of assumptions, they didn't turn out to be true. When I made the business projections and, and the financial modeling for DMEI, I had a much better idea of how I was gonna make money, which made it much easier to do the financial model. And this kind of internal business plan is meant to keep your team informed, right? So as my team went with me from one company to the next, how do I keep them as part of the plan? How do we show that the nature of our business is gonna be more successful this time? And it really was more goal oriented. We had a lot of more metrics that we were measuring, a lot of things that we wanted to make sure that we hurt, hit certain milestones before we spent money on something else. So we started with making sure we had a good website and a good brand. And we started building up our social media and we used LinkedIn a lot. Things that I started to do, some of them BPOE, but I also spent money on things like TV commercials. And I, I did a lot of talks and events where I couldn't find clients. With DMEI, I focused it more to be doing more talks with just people I would want to do business with and not spending money on things that wouldn't give me a good ROI. These are the kind of things that you can do differently when you do an internal business plan versus a startup. The next is a strategic plan. Where are you going the next five years? If you already have a business and you've launched it and you're making money and you're doing something and you really want to go to the next level, you have to figure out the how that's going to happen. And you use a strategic business plan for your whole team to understand how how you're going to go from where you started to where you're going next. I'm doing this right now with Sonic VA. We launched Sonic VA back at the beginning of this year. And through the first year, we had some pretty good growth. We went from two uh, VAs and four clients to over 30 clients and over a dozen VAs. Um, I've had been able to quadruple my profits from the first month to the last month of the year, right? So it's been a good year of growth, but a lot of like, you know, didn't quite do this right, didn't quite do this right. So next year, we're going to really try to grow the business based on all these learnings. So the original business plan I had back in January, I've kind of taken elements of that and taking what worked and then growing it and taking that what didn't work and moving it out of the way. For example, we were eventually um, we learned that we couldn't do everything for everyone. So the idea behind Sonic VA was if you have a challenge that you are trying to do in your business, if you have a task that needs to be done, if there's something that's keeping you busy, you outsource that to a VA. And the idea is that we could do anything that you can do on a computer, basically, you can outsource. Well, we found that that was just too broad, so we started narrowing our focus. And now we primarily do social media, we do uh, email marketing, we do video editing, and we do very basic WordPress websites. That's our niche, right? Those are the things that we can do well. So we've narrowed our focus, but we're going deeper within those elements, and that's our plan for the next couple of years. So I'm writing a new business plan in year two of Sonic VA to be much more strategic than the first one was kind of figured out as we go. And this is really to accomplish a series of goals of mine that are to get us to be more efficient. Bottom line is I spent almost all of 2020 working hard every day, sometimes 12, 14 hours a day, seven days a week, trying to figure out how to grow the Sonic VA business. My goal in 2021 is not to do the same thing. My goal is to hire people to do a lot of things that I don't have to do myself and focus more on the big picture and be able to do more of this, to be in front of the camera talking to my audience and then having somebody else do everything else to fulfill it, to be able to sign up the clients, to get the VAs lined up, to do the monitoring, the measuring, to do the payroll, to do the billing, all that stuff should be done by a team, not the leader, right? So that's my plan for 2021, is to get myself out of doing all the things that I had to do in 2020 to get the business off the ground. That's a strategic plan. That's how you grow your business. The next type of plan is a feasibility plan. Now I did this when I launched Sonic VA, right? I really understood that when I was trying to move part of my business efforts from the Philippines and Southeast Asia to more in the US, I did a lot of, of research. I, I did a lot of talking to people. I went to a lot of events to try to figure out, can I do analytics training for small businesses in the US? Will people buy 
from me the ability to look at their data and make sense of their numbers so they can make better decisions. And it was basically a feasibility business plan. Can this work? Will this happen? What do I need to invest in it to find out who are my competitors? What kind of who's my clients? Who's my perfect client? Who's my avatar? A lot of that stuff happened to assess the approach to a new product or service in a new market. And I was looking at a new product um, for my market, not for me. I was looking at a new market and I was looking at something that most of them hadn't really heard about before. A lot of small businesses and entrepreneurs aren't really big into using analytics. So after a year of, of feasibility, um, we found that you know the, the Sonic Analytics brand um, didn't have a lot of leverage to grow in that market. So we launched Sonic VA after kind of fumbling around for a couple of years. But that feasibility plan is what I wrote when I first decided to move most of my business from the Philippines of the US, I wrote a new business plan, a feasibility plan, right? So if you're looking to make a significant change because you want to have a change, because you need to make a change, because financially or based on your focus or what you want to do, what you've been doing is not long term, you do a feasibility business plan for what comes next. So the last type of, of, of plan that I'll talk about today is the what if, focuses on what if scenarios, right? If this happens, then we want to be ready for it. Now, I've been rewriting the Sonic VA plan and as a spinoff called Sonic Video Assist. And this is going to be a new brand, my sixth company that I'm going to launch in January. And this one is basically just video editing, right? So Sonic VA will still exist and service people that want general virtual assistant services. Things like email marketing and social media management and posting things and blog posts and every, anything that's not to do with videos. If you want to have a really good YouTube channel, you want to crank out a bunch of high quality videos that you can use to be the centerpiece of your marketing, that's what Sonic Video Assistant is going to do. So we're going to kind of spin off Sonic VA. And I started working on that business plan a few months back as a what if. What if we go and, and invest a lot of time and energy into launching Sonic Video Assist? What does that look like? Who do I have to pull from Sonic VA and move them over to Sonic Video Assist? Who can work part time? Who has to go over full time? What's the plan for all that? That was all in my business plan that I am now executing. So that's the five types of business plans, right? So whether you're looking to launch something or to grow something or to significantly change course or to do some research to see if you should change and what would happen if you did, and then kind of planning that out, you need to know what kind of business plan to use. So that's why I kind of covered these five business plans, right? To help you figure out what you're going to tell your investors or your business partners, what you're going to use to give leadership to your employees, your staff, your team, and how you're going to spend your time. It's going to be different based on the type of business plan you write because you're going to be at a different phase of being an entrepreneur. So startup versus, you know, ongoing operations versus spinoff versus like feasibility versus a what if they're all going to require different parts of you. So real quick, I want to talk about, again, Sonic VA. We mentioned that Sonic VAs, um, we can do anything you, you want done from a computer, and we do have some limitations to that, but there's certain things that we do do. For example, we manage LinkedIn accounts. We can do Facebook ads. We can help you promote a book. We can get you booked on stages to speak, whether it be virtual or eventually in-person stages. We can help you with your email campaigns, data entry. We can do appointment setting. We can do market research. We can manage your social media, and we do that by bringing you to a place where you can be more consistent in what you share, what you do, and what you post. And it has more clarity for your audience. So it builds certainty among your clients and your prospects and your audience so they know what to expect from you. So this allows you to focus on what you do best when you hire Sonic VA to do all the rest. And I also have the video program that I am uh, just launched that we're going to be really pushing into next year with Sonic Video Assistant. And basically the idea here is that for $500, bucks, um, we are going to make seven videos for you, right? Six videos, one each week for six weeks and a bonus video at the end. And each video is going to have a certain polish to it, a certain production, right? We're going to do an intro and an outro of 10 seconds each with a little music, some something that hooks your audience in the beginning, and something that gives your audience a call to action at the end. We're going to take it so it's not just you speaking to the camera for the entire time of your video. As you've noticed with my video, you see a lot of things that break up just me talking to the camera. You have things that pop up here and here. You have things that pop up behind me. You have things that go over to the whole stage. 
or a whole screen. So that's really kind of what you want to be able to do. And we can do that for you. We can, you know, do several versions of things for you. You can make revisions before things get put on YouTube. We can manage your YouTube channel for you. Um, we can help you with the analytics and the SEO keywording. So basically, we want you to be able to record some video then sit back and, and relax while we build your YouTube empire. And that's really what Sonic Video Assist is all about. So whether you're looking for help um, on social media or something like a video, reach out to us at sonicva.com. And you can check out the videos at sonicva.com slash video. Um, I want to thank you for your time. If you have any questions about business plans, if you want someone to help you write and manage your business plan, we can have a VA help you do that. We can help you build a marketing plan. We can help you do competitor research. So the pieces of your business plan, if you want to delegate some of that, let us know, especially if you're trying to figure out what you should price your products at, what your competitors are pricing, what the market will bear. If you're trying to figure out demographics and geographics, where are your customers? Where's the best bang for your buck? to spend, whether it be through like Facebook ads or traditional media, um, we can help you do all that. So that's my talk for today. I hope it helped you think about business plans and what you need to do to have the right business plan for you right now. So thank you again for your time. Now go out there and be awesome.